One of the biggest love-hate relationships in modern history, maybe in all of history, has been the phone. Your phone is probably one of the items you own that you use the most, day in, day out. But it is also one of the biggest security breaches, the most likely to cause you severe identity theft, you could get hacked, You've got all these accounts and apps that could take over your information, track you, follow you, sell your data, etc. So the good and the bad of the phone. And so today we're going to talk about some options with Faraday bags, how you can lock this down in operation, stay invisible. So Faraday bags, Faraday boxes, Faraday in general has been a popular term for a long time. And there's a lot of options that you can get from a simple Velcro and you can slide it into the pouch. So you take your phone, you slide it into the pouch, make sure it's the back pouch. So you can see right here, slides right in, pushes down nice and snug. You've got the flap, folds over on the Velcro and your phone is anonymous, it's invisible. It can't even be tracked by the FBI. Well, it's not necessarily true. See, it comes down to the strength of the bag. So Faraday was the original creator, but it comes down to the strength of the material, the quality of the material, the weave, et cetera, et cetera. We can get really scientific, but what you need to understand when it comes to RFID blocking, when it comes to Faraday, when it comes to trying to block signals like Wi-Fi, signals like Bluetooth, which is a very, very large leak that a lot of people have, this is a good way to transport your phone. So in the old days, what would you have? In the old days, you would have a phone like this, right? A, what I call a burner phone, a flip phone. So one thing I could do with this phone is I could pop the back off and I can pull out the battery. So we pop the back off, we pull out the battery, and we are literally now anonymous with this phone. It has no battery, it has no power. And provided you make sure there's no secondary batteries, which they did start doing on some phones back in the day, this one does not have that feature. When you take the battery out, there's no power source, there's no way for this phone to transmit anything. And so what a lot of people will do is they take the phone, they take the back, they set the battery, you can put a rubber band on it, and you can transport it, and when you're ready, when you get to wherever it is you're going, all you do is quickly install the battery, which takes seconds. You can also pull the SIMs in and out really efficiently, install the battery, pop the back on, turn it on, and you are good to make whatever phone calls you have to make. So it's a very simple process. It's a very easy process, and you're able to utilize a burner phone or a flip phone this way back in the day. Then we started getting into more phones like the kind of smartphone, or I guess you could call semi-smartphone, like the BlackBerry. Now, Blackberries are really cool, and you still have the same thing where you can pop the back off and you could take the battery out of some of them and then some of them become more of the smart variety. They have the QWERTY keyboard. They are kind of semi-smart. And this is the era when things started getting complicated. This is the era when you started having more Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, etc. And then of course with the modern iPhone, Samsung flagship phones, it's all tracking all the time. So in the old days, you could take your little kit, you were good to go. You really didn't even need a Faraday bag because you could pop SIMs and batteries all day, every day, and it was a very simple process. And a lot of people still use this process. But now when you're transporting your phone, good thing you could do is A, turn off the Bluetooth. You should always turn off the Bluetooth unless you are actively using it. Next thing you should do is turn off the Wi-Fi if you are not currently using it, if you're not currently at your house maybe, or your office you're using Wi-Fi, because the Wi-Fi is gonna ping consistently, and Wi-Fi triangulation is a huge issue for a lot of people when it comes to trying to have privacy and security. Bluetooth is another massive issue, and that is one of the biggest issues just because the way the Bluetooth technology is created. And the next thing is, the phone has tracking features baked in. It's just a fact. If you have any flagship phone, it's baked in. Now, one of the best options, what a lot of people use, like a Pixel with Graphene OS, it's an okay option, but there's still trackable options, but it's far better than an iPhone or a traditional Android flagship. The next thing you could do is you could use like a Linux phone, which Linux phones are finally really starting to become comparable, right? They're comparable options. They're not such a big downgrade that a lot of people don't find them worth, worth the, the value. But 
even with that, with all the modern phones and with the modern technology, it becomes tough. So what a lot of people do is they'll get a Faraday bag. Now, this is one of my regular, I wouldn't say burner, I call it a semi-burner. I have a whole bunch of the, the actual flip phone burner phones. This is a phone that I use from time to time. And one good option is you've got one of these large travel RFID wallets. And so what you can do here is you can see that this is RFID and it's got the same Faraday material, so it's blocking. And I've done tests with all these to see which one works the best. And we'll talk about that here in a second. But what this is, is a travel wallet. You can put your passport in there. It's got even a little lanyard on the side, which is very annoying, but I barely use this. Mostly sits in my safe. Uh, you, could, you could put cards and stuff in there. Of course, it's got all your cards and keys and stuff on the inside. If that's something you want to use, I keep cables like charging cables and, and wired headphones for this particular phone. And then I'll put the phone in the secure pocket. So when I slide the phone in the secure pocket in here, zip it up, we're good to go. And then you close it and make sure you zip it. Now, a lot of people will even resort to using things like tinfoil. Now, does tinfoil work? Well, the thing is it does, but you've got to understand that one flimsy piece of tinfoil that you got at the big box store probably won't work because the signal strength has gotten so strong. And nowadays, you know, you went from 4G to now we have 5G. I mean, I know my iPhone is a 5G phone. The signal is incredibly strong and it's continuously gotten stronger. So just putting a, a wrapping a piece of tinfoil around your phone actually typically doesn't work for most phones nowadays. And there are a lot of RFID or Faraday bags that don't work as good as they claim either. Reason being, the signal strength is stronger and it still gets through. So it comes down to quality over buying a random bag. That's like all products, some are better than others. Now I'll leave in the description a few that I use and you can check them out down below if you're looking for a Faraday bag. But transporting your phone, it's a good option to utilize one of these because if you turn everything off and use a blackout, uh, complete blackout on your, on your device, then you've got a lot better shot of not being tracked from point A to point B. So you might be thinking, well, let's say I'm at my house and I'm going to my office, okay? Well, what I could do is I can transport my phone in one of these bags and when I turn it back on in my office, it'll know that it was in my house, it'll know that it's in my office, but it won't know where I went in between. It won't know if I stopped at the store, it won't know if I you know, went and played poker, it won't know what I did. It can't track and catalog everything I do because where a lot of people get confused, especially on iPhone, is they think, well, you could turn all that off. You could turn the basis of advertising off, but the phone still tracks everything you do. At the core of the OS, at almost all these phones, they still track everything you do. And so transporting them securely, and that's one thing to look at, is when you're going from point A to point B, one of the best things you could do is a secure transport with a Faraday bag. So one of these different bags, you see a lot of preppers use them, you see a lot of privacy advocates use them, you see a lot of people who need privacy and security, whether it's journalists or you know, frankly, even alphabet letter agencies will use these kind of things to transport them because they know better and they know that this stuff can't actually be turned off. It's baked in, right? A lot of this stuff is baked in. And that's why a lot of the higher up spies, if you will, they will have special custom built phones to take out all the stuff that we consumers have because they know that it is a giant tracking device. And if it's hacked into or if it's exploited in any way, the vulnerabilities are you know, one of the deepest wells you've ever seen. And so that's something you gotta keep in mind when you're looking at this. So I'm a big proponent of Faraday bags and I've built Faraday bags, Faraday boxes, Faraday cages. I've got a video coming up where I 3D printed a really cool, interesting Faraday box and I'll be showing that video soon. So make sure you subscribe if you haven't already, click the thumbs up because we're putting out videos all the time here on Privacy X. But that's my take on, on Faraday bags. One of my biggest uses for them is transport from place to place. Do you use Faraday bags? Do you transport your phone in these? Like say you're going from your house, if you're in college, you go to your school, or maybe you're going to a specific place, your, your job or your office, you're on a company like me, you, you go to a, a specific place and then turn it on? Or do you just always leave your phone on and assume it's not tracking you? Because it is, they always are. And that's, that's the biggest concern with these products. And that's what causes a lot of issues for people is they don't understand the vulnerabilities they're creating. A lot of people say, well, I have nothing to hide, so why should I care about privacy? It's not about nothing to hide. When you give away these rights for no reason, then you know it allows people to take a bunch of liberties, liberties that you don't want them to take on your behalf just because you assume you have nothing to hide. And also, nothing to hide doesn't matter comparatively to what about when people start stealing your identity? What about when people start taking your data and using it against you? What about when you end up with a stalker? What I mean, there's all these scenarios that just because you haven't done anything wrong is irrelevant. I, I think a lot of people try to correlate the two. Doing something wrong and having something to hide, they're not even in the same playing field. We're not talking about the same thing. 
And I think you should keep that in mind when you make your cell phone purchase. But anyway, that's all I got to say about Faraday bags. I wanted to kind of talk. I get a lot of questions. Do I use them and how do I use them? I will store phones in them like this because they're convenient to store them in, but really the big use is taking them from point A to point B. Yes, as soon as you turn it on, it'll know, but it won't have the entire path. It won't know where the phone was, and that's the real key. Even if like I'm traveling, if I'm traveling from Vegas to Texas or Texas to, to Seattle or Seattle to Detroit, I will know that when I turn it on, okay, but it won't know the path and it won't know if I went places. It won't know if I stopped here or there. It'll only know when I turn it, when I take it back out of here and turn it back on. So good option. Have an amazing day. Go all in in your business and your life every single day. Take your privacy seriously and I'll see you guys in the next video.